Hello, whether I'm reaching you during the morning, afternoon, or evening, I want to welcome you to the Leading Edge broadcast. This is a time where I'm going to do everything I know to do uh, to impact and influence you on two basic areas. This broadcast is a little different than the other broadcasts that I do. I'm not going to be doing a line-by-line -line exposition of scripture. Um, I'm not going to dive into biblical doctrine in a heavy way, but I'm going to primarily concentrate on two areas, and that is personal development and leadership development. Personal development and leadership development. Um, I have a dual call in life. I um, have a call to ministry, and that's the fivefold ministry, uh, a call of God that has been keen in my life since the age of 17. But all my life, even through grammar school, I found myself always uh, initiating things in leadership. So I've been leading uh, for well over 30 something years in one capacity or another. And I spent over 20 years uh, in the corporate world, uh, moving uh, from one level to another. I uh, had a base uh, representative job or recruiter's position, moved to an assistant director's position, or rather a mentor position, which is a leadership phase or step, and moved on to assistant director, and then moved on to be a senior director, executive director of a, of a recruitment uh, team. And I've managed uh, staffs, uh, I've managed uh, a number of people, and of course I, I manage an assembly, uh, work with staff and, and a congregation. So I've had an extensive experience uh, both in leadership and personal development. Uh, for over 25 years, I've been in some form of sales. I've done anything from network marketing uh, to being involved um, from the recruiting base, uh, telemarketing, of course, in the earlier years during college, and various other entrepreneurial um, endeavors that I have been involved in. And uh, I will tell you that the number one thing that I've seen over 35 years, I've seen it in the body of Christ, I've seen it in the secular corporate world, I've seen gifted, talented people uh, that stagnated their life for one basic reason. It's amazing with all the resources, with the invention of the internet, with books and tapes, and uh, now you can get podcasts and material on any subject, doesn't matter on what it is that you need to learn uh, or to know about, you can basically get self-taught uh, by sitting right on the computer, getting on the internet, and learning. But what I've noticed in over uh, 25 years of leadership and over 30 years of working in some sales uh, capacity, working with multimillionaires, working with individuals that have made uh, commanded huge incomes, six-figure incomes, and individuals, of course, that were just breaking into the area of business, sales, leadership, et cetera, so forth and so on. The number one um, thing that I've noticed, the deficiency that I notice, is that very few people have a passion for personal development. Very few people have passion for personal development. It is amazing, even in the body of Christ, how you'll find individuals that will tell you, all I need is the Holy Spirit. And I'm not opposed to that. I mean, I believe absolutely that scripture speaks to us that he, the Holy Spirit, would lead and guide us into all truth. But it's amazing how less, uh, what's the word I want to use, how non-holistic we are as individuals. You are a spirit you have a soul and you live in a body. That's one way individuals place it. There's another way you can say that you are a soul. You have a spirit. You live in a body. I don't split hairs with, with either area, but to be frank and honest with you, you are, <clears throat> though you are a spirit, the soul part of you is the real you. The heart is the real you, but the soul uh, has the a combination of the heart and uh, excuse me, the, uh, the spirit and the soul uh, combined to make what we call the heart. But what I have discovered is that most people don't have a passion to develop themselves. I mean, I've seen talented leaders that simply think they think personal development is, is just a bunch of mess. 
I've seen and heard people. Uh, I do life coaching. I've got a couple of certifications in life coaching. I've heard people say, you know, that stuff doesn't make any difference. Positive thinking is, has nothing. All of that is a crock. You know, it's just it's just something people are trying to sell you books and tapes on. It's amazing the negativity that you hear. And I've seen great people, people that are just naturally gifted. Uh, very few, but there are some people that are naturally gifted in leadership. And what I mean by that, they have a a sensitivity, a uh, 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 proclivity to lead, a, a strength in that area. Um, but they have never decided uh, to really become a student of that area. Now, now, why is that so important? Why is there such a significance? Uh, in this whole thing. Well, scripture tells us that we only can advance based on what we know, knowledge. And there are two kinds of knowledge, of course. There's just base knowledge or intellectual knowledge, and then there's experiential knowledge uh, as well. And, and, and it takes the combination of the two in order to really become effective. It would be nice if we could just say all I need, and, and, and in reality, I know again what we mean by the expression is all I need is the Holy Spirit, but the reality is the Holy Spirit is working with things in your life. He was working with capacity that you've chosen to invest in uh, so that he can widen your perspective. He can do more in your life when you have decided to develop yourself, to not be stagnant. I listen to people all over and they say, you know, I don't have a mentor. I haven't had a mentor. And then people will say things because I, I say that I have a couple of spiritual fathers in my life. Um, one that went home to be with the Lord in 2004 and one that's in the earth today. Um, and those are what I call spiritual fathers and I don't have many. I do declare some individuals spiritual fathers just simply for what they've done in the body of Christ and their father in the prophetic, their father in the apostolic, their father in the pastoral, their father in the teaching area. Uh, Derek Prince was a father in, in teaching and the apostolic and deliverance. Um, there are many fathers and uh, in many direction uh, directions of uh, of that that grace and that there's uh, fathers on the teaching of faith and fathers of movements and and etc but uh if when it comes to the intimate exchange of a father son spiritually it's not something you go after it's not something uh uh that um that you just sit down and read a book and say this is my father or a spiritual father there's something about it that's supernatural at its core uh, where there's a connection that you you it's like divinely being connected together and and I have two men that are like that in my life but I have several several mentors uh, many of those mentors are both male and female I've been impacted by both in my life um, I don't have the same story that some people have about being abused uh, by women or men. I honor both and esteem others. I have no issues with either area. But what I have experienced as I've walked through is the limitations. And uh, it's so interesting because you can have, you can have incredible knowledge but no, don't know how to flesh it out. And you can be limited. You can have no knowledge, but yet zeal uh, and motivation, but can't flesh it out and you're limited. And so really what we want to be are holistic individuals. I begin this leading edge process by talking about you and developing yourself. You see, the hardest person to lead in life is not your business. It's not your management team. The hardest person to lead in life is not your family. The hardest person to lead or people to lead in life is not your recruitment staff, your administrative staff, your leaders, your congregation, your business ventures, your company. No, the hardest person to lead in life is yourself. Understand that. Hands down. The most difficult person in life to lead is yourself. Well, 
we want to do in these broadcasts is we want to work on you as an individual. Like I said earlier, I have over 30 years of experience in leading in some kind of capacity or another. Um, leadership, by the way, is taken. It's not given. And when I make that statement for the wrong paradigm uh, thinker, for the person that rather that's thinking out of the wrong paradigm, paradigm, they think I'm saying that you must barge your way and manipulate what your way or you must um, uh, aggressively move your way or uh, what's a jockey your way for leadership. That is absolutely not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is a individual that leads and they're leading on the edge and they rise to the occasion are those individuals that are initiative takers. Uh, they see a dream, they see an idea, and they act. Uh, leaders don't have to be told to do something. They don't have to be told that there's a problem and I need to fix this problem or work on the solution. Leaders automatically work and there's a drive within them to move something beyond the status quo. They have this inherent desire to make things happen, to move in a certain way. And that, that, that's probably first level, um, as one well-known leader says, that's probably uh, the mindset of an achiever. <clears throat> but a, a leader has an achieve, achieving mechanism in them uh, where they, they're doers, they're strong doers, but they, they also have this ability to influence other people and uh, they have really, really a grace and a gift uh, to develop other people. And that's, that's a huge part of the deal. But, but when, you, when, when, when I say leadership is taken, you emerge. That's when we call an emerging leader. We don't mean it's just somebody that we pick out. It's someone that's emerging. They're, they're, it's, like, um, it's like prophecy bubbling up inside of you. It, some people have that. Uh, form of prophecy. There's several different ways that prophecy works, but it's the bubbling up inside that, that sometimes we speak out the prophetic word and God deals with us in different ways. Some people with visions, some people are seers, some people just have the bubble up inside. Uh, so you have different uh, capacities in regards to the prophetic, but in reference to leadership, when a person is uh, coming to age of their leading, they, they start emerging. Uh, they, they, uh, they, their, their inherent desire to, to move and to, to see things change or to see things develop or to fix issues, they, they just emerge. And that's what I mean leadership is taken. Um, it's not just something that you delegate to someone. There's a, there's a, there's a passion and something that occurs inside the person that causes them to um, emerge and to come forward. And, uh, and so we're not talking about jockeying at all for a position. We're not talking about titles and all of that foolishness. What we're talking about is an individual that is arising for an occasion. Let me make it very clear to you that leaders actually are really the greatest level of servanthood. True leadership has a whole lot to do with making capacity for others making a platform for others. Uh, like one of my uh, friends, uh, distant mentors, well, actually, he's a personal uh, so acquaintance of mine. He wrote a book called Hero Makers. And uh, they talk about using your platform as a leader to bring other people up. And that all in life, you just look to raise up leaders. And uh, these are, this is an area that I'm stepping into in a much greater way at this time uh, because we need leaders if we're going to expand, if we're going to have a legacy, we need leaders. And so in this broadcast, I'm going to talk about developing your edge as a person and developing your edge as a leader. How do we do that? Number one by developing ourselves. That's the most important capacity that needs to be increased. You need to develop yourself. Number two is developing your emotional intelligence. Now we're starting to move into this area of inward consciousness 
and being able to understand people at a much higher level. And then number three, um, number three we have is by developing by developing a kingdom leadership paradigm or mindset. This is huge. I, I've got to begin to see things the way the Lord sees them. I'm reminded, and some of you all may have heard of this story, um, because we're kind of platforming leadership, talking about personal development. And uh, there's a whole lot of um, insecure people that are operating in leadership. Now, let me make sure when I make this statement, you understand that yours truly is also insecure. Uh, you say you're an insecure person. Yes, every individual on planet Earth is insecure. You can have the greatest leaders on planet Earth and there is a insecurity somewhere. So when I say insecure, I'm talking about unhealthy insecurity. Everybody has a place in their life where they're not sure of or they're, um, or maybe they're overshooting a runway because really they are insecure. There are different manifestations for insecurity. And so <clears throat> every leader, it doesn't matter whether they're a billionaire, multimillionaire. If you look at Jeff Bezos, he has insecurities. You look at uh, Bill Gates, he has insecurities. You look at um, uh, Buffett, Warren Buffett, he has insecurities. Uh, you look at LeBron James, he has insecurities. You look at Michael Jordan, he has insecurities. You look at Tiger Woods, he has insecu uh, insecurities. Every leader, Tesla, uh, <clears throat> these guys... Have great minds, but every single one of us, white, black, Hispanic, Jew, Gentile, Greek, tall, short, wide, uh, it doesn't matter. We all have insecurities. That was birthed in us at the fall with Adam. And that place of insecurity is a place where the kingdom has not perpetuated yet. The life of the kingdom is not perpetuated. And we're constantly in the process of sanctification where God is changing us and bringing us and conforming us to the image of his son. When you lose a sense of self, okay, you need self-worth, but we'll talk about what all that fits. But when you lose that heavy consciousness of self, that's when you're moving in a greater degree of being uh free from insecurities because all insecurities are is a consciousness of self in one area or another of your life and uh, there are certain areas I have absolutely no insecurities about and uh, there are other areas that I may not even be aware of right now after over 30 years of ministry that I'm insecure in an area until the occasion arises where I'm faced or confronted in an environment that causes that insecurity to arise. Uh, case in point, if uh, I'm around individuals, uh, let's say a person is a, I'll say it this way, in many cases, it doesn't go for every case, but if a person is a, a millionaire and has moved and sh shaken with uh, other multimillionaires, 10, 50, 100 million dollars, they're very confident and very strong and you see no insecurities necessarily some of these people of course have insecurities uh, but many times you see no insecurities with individuals like this uh, because they have achieved a certain level of uh, of honor or respect in those areas and they they've they maximize their capacity if a person hasn't developed inwardly though and have really grown uh, inside internally what happens is if you put that same person that's a multimillionaire in a room with billionaires depending on how they're seeing life and what they see inside really how much they've developed themselves those individuals will begin to question things in that room what they're really doing is their insecurity has now arisen because the climate has changed. You're no longer in a $50 million climate or a $100 million climate. You are now in a billion dollar climate. Or you're no longer with just movers and shakers that have had four people that they've managed. But now you're working with someone that has managed a whole corporation. And when you're in that environment, the first thing that rises up inside of you is the need to protect yourself.
the need to make sure that I watch my back or that, you know, and so you start having all kinds of thoughts and emotional connections to your past, and then you begin to really, uh, in your mind, try to rationalize, should I be in a room? Can I handle this? What, what are people thinking? And all of these kinds of things come in, and then what you'll find that people that are insecure, what they will begin to do is they look down. Now watch what they do, watch what we do as individuals. We will, in order to make ourselves feel better, if a person is up here as a billionaire, or the person is up here in whatever, excellence or whatever they're doing, if we're not uh, developed inside to know what to do and make the adjustment, we need to bring them down to our level or beneath us. So now that's when we begin to criticize or say things that are really uh, directly connected to jealousy uh, or envy or uh, all other kinds of things. And I've met people like that when you got promoted and people wanted, they didn't like the fact that you were promoted, especially when you're promoted from your peers. Uh, with my situation, I was promoted. I was right here with my peers and I was promoted and then I was promoted, then I was promoted. And when you're promoted, uh, some individuals have an internal um, negative uh, switch that goes on that they automatically oppose you. Some of you are dealing with that and you don't understand what's going on. Well, that's the insecurity in their life from you moving from a peer to now being um, their superior. I hate using that word superior, but what I mean is by, be, by you now moving into a place of leadership and management and responsibility, that means you have a certain degree of authority that they, they're not feeling. And you'll see this all in the church world. You see it everywhere that people get territorial, they act all funny, and they look for ways to tear the person down. When the real issue is that they're reflecting on their insecurity and that is causing them to act with in, in behavior, in a behavior that, that is not, in, in our case, not kingdom, not godly, and not edifying. And so all of us have insecurities, but when you're committed to personal development and personal growth, watch this very closely. What happens inside of you is when you have studied and continue to put things in you and you're committed, your life is committed to personal development. You are a wide thinker. You have thought through the mind of others because you read their material. You, you've thought and listened through the mind of others because you have listened to their podcasts. You have thought through the mind of others because you've sat with the Holy Spirit and spent time in the Word of God. And all of this is shaping your inner paradigm. Your inner world is much wider. Now you become a student. You become a teach. You become teachable, coachable. So you're in a situation now that when that happens, you recognize, okay, look, you know, I'm not going to say I'm just a nobody telling everybody about somebody that can save anybody. And you, you don't have this stupid grasshopper mentality, but you look to those people and say, wow, they are there, and let me learn about them so I can move and expand my capacity. So you, you, that insecurity can be used as an opportunity and a platform for growth or it could become a wedge or an anchor to stop you from growing because of the way you're perceiving the environment or the people that you're around. So all of us have insecurities, but if we commit to personal development, we can grow and glean from every situation. And always remember this, you can learn two things. You can learn what to do or what not to do from anybody. So no matter where I am, I'm always a student. It doesn't matter who I'm talking to. It doesn't matter what environment I'm in. I never think that I know more than what a person knows because there's something that I may discover. I don't shut anybody out. I don't shut anyone out. I listen and learn. Yeah, there's some things that people won't be able to teach you because you're further than they are in certain areas of capacity. But you know what? The person might have the kindest demeanor and you watch how they influence people that way. So if you're a practitioner of development, constantly looking to grow as a person, you can learn from every situation in any situation and for every person. So as I was saying, uh, the first three areas, if we look at leading effectively and leading with excellence, I must first develop myself. 
Second, I need to develop my emotional intelligence. And third, I, I, need, I need to really lead from a kingdom mindset. And so let me tell you a little story. I was perusing through uh, the internet one day and I saw something that just absolutely um, touched my heart. Um, I'm often misunderstood for various reasons. Um, I have a D-type, uh, not personality, D-type personality, but I'm a, uh, on the DISC profile, for some of you that know what that is, that's, there are assessments that you can take that, that is a part of your leadership development that I ex, um, encourage everybody to do. There's um, Myers-Briggs and various other uh, technologies out here that you can actually begin uh, to learn some things about yourself. But I use the DISC profile and have had several different types of uh, um, uh, assessments done over the years with leadership. And um, particularly the DISC profile has the D for dominant, the I for influential, the S for steady, um, and the C for consciousness or uh, uh, a person's, person that is conscientious. And basically... Uh, when you do this assessment, uh, it, it, it gives you a report, about a 28-page 28, 28 report, which, which really is amazing. I remember the first time I did this, my wife said, who wrote that? He says, I cannot believe it. They give you a summary of, of the type of person you are. She said, that is exactly how you operate. And uh, it's designed to give you the skill set or to give you knowledge and wisdom, uh, I would say knowledge, about yourself and how you're wired and how you think. And so we'll talk a little bit more about this in the uh, upcoming portion of our teaching. But I want to tell you that if you will commit to the personal development, you'll find yourself making the journey a whole lot more effectively than you are when you don't commit to personal development. And considering I only have about a minute left, I want to just share with you, again, the purpose of this broadcast, Leading Edge, is to work on personal development and leadership development. These are the two things, whether it's business, ministry, and personal life in your family, those are the things that we're going to focus on as we go along, and I have plenty of content. I'm the senior pastor of Destiny Wind Christian Center, located in Park Forest, Illinois, 160 Westwood Drive. We're on the corner of Westwood and Wildwood. Sunday mornings we have service at 10 a.m. And Wednesday nights we have either school, uh, excuse me, Equipping Bible Institute or Bible Study uh, where we're teaching apologetics and focusing in on a particular topic or teaching individuals and equipping them for life. You can find me on my YouTube channel. Christ Family Network has a YouTube or you can look up Kelvin Easter and subscribe. And I'll be there to give you great content and a blessing is bestowed upon you through the teaching of the word of God. God bless you.